The gardener on my village can play better than this. That is what a Michael Chapman, who is a singer-songwriter, said when he was given the best guitarists in the country to work with. He was, of course, talking about Mick Ronson, who worked in these gardens here as a gardener. Now, legend has it that Michael Campbell, who was in the band The Hype, rushed up to Hull to find Mick Ronson, who was marking out a rugby pitch. Now, Michael Campbell told Mick Ronson that a singer, stroke songwriter, wanted his services. And Mick Ronson, who had been to London and failed a couple of times already, didn't particularly want to go, but as he was having a bad day in Hull, he decided he would go. And of course, that meeting was with a Mr. David Bowie. When Mick Ronson went down to London for his meeting with Mr. Bowie and played for him, David Bowie is rumoured to have said to Tony Frisconti, I found my Jeff Beck. Little did Mick Ronson know that the next day, David Bowie had a uh, a set lined up on the John Peel show on Radio 1 and of course Mick didn't know the songs so Mick with very little practice with David Bowie played the John Peel show and just watched David Bowie's hands to see what chords he was playing and just improvised over the top. Now it was on that set that John Peel asked Mick Ronson and, well, asked David Bowie, are you taking this band out on tour? And Mick Ronson, who wasn't officially in the band yet, I imagine looked perplexed when David Bowie said, yes, yes I am. And that is what started, that's what started, well, that's what got Mick Ronson in the hype. And the hype you will better know as Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars. Are you going to be doing gigs with this band? <laughs> well, looking at them, no. <laughs> yes, we're going to do some gigs. I'll, I'll be Michael. If Michael doesn't really know. He's just come down from Hull and uh, I met him for the first time about two days I ago. I see, but you, you are planning to go on the road, as it were. Yes, yes, very shortly. Mick Ronson worked on the Man Who Sold the World album with David Bowie. And... It was through working on that album, which Tony Fasconti, David Bowie's longtime producer, was producing. Mick Ronson saw that Tony Fasconti was scoring, scoring music. And Mick Ronson, who was a classically trained pianist and a violin player, didn't know how to score and he really wanted to learn. And Tony Fasconti taught Mick Ronson how to score. Now, Tony Fisconti didn't make it on David Bowie's next album, which is Hunky Dory. He didn't produce that one. Um, so there was a, in between the man who sold the world and Hunky Dory and learning to score, Mick Ronson was learning his string arrangements and now the string arrangements would take part on Hunky Dory most famously with A Life on Mars Apologies for dropping in the video like this I was just editing and I've uh, realised part of it hasn't recorded and the part that hasn't recorded is the part where I'm saying I've come to the wrong park so very me. But what it is, is since being back I've realised I wasn't in the wrong park. The memorial that was in Queen's Park, which is where I was, has now been removed. 
and his new memorial is in East Park, which is another part of Hull, which is closer to where he was from. Um, the memorial he had in Queen's Park, I will send a link to. It was called the Worst Memorial in Rock. He had like a slab of concrete and a cafe. But there was always complaints by fans, but it was just so appalling as a memorial. So while I've got your attention, I'll say the aim, the the theme of these videos isn't to do the genius behind the genius. So Bernie Taupin last week, Mick Watson this week. It's mainly to get me out of lockdown and just to go to different places. And it just so happens that being from the East Midlands, it appears to be that people from the East Midlands didn't hog the limelight. I'm going to have people from Hall saying, we're from Yorkshire. We're not East Midlands, we're Yorkshire. Well, apologies for that. I hope you enjoy the video. Enjoy the rest of the video. So where was I? I think I'm in the right park. I have no idea now that... Um, the gardener in my village can play guitar better than this. He yeah, getting deja vu. Um, this is the park he worked in, I believe. Anyway. I don't know what to believe, but all I know is this looks like a big park. So I've got no chance of finding it. Um, where was I? Hunky dory. Yeah. Um, so the reason he was in the band was because of his sound. Nick Ronson has a very distinct sound. All the best guitarists have a distinct sound. And his is very distinct. Um, not that I know, but apparently he used to play with the wah pedal halfway down. And yeah, and that's what gave him that big, unique Bowie sound that would feature more prominently on Ziggy Stardust. Um, I'm going to try and find where I need to be, so I'll get back to you. So, as I genuinely have no idea where I'm going, I'll keep talking about Mike Ronson and uh, see what I can remember. Um, I suppose I know more about Bowie, <gasps> but that's not the point. Um, so, <clears throat> with Mick Ronson's help and the Spiders from Mars, Ziggy Star just got made and released. I've, I've no idea where I'm going here. Um, and people think he released it and then he was massive. But he wasn't really. He it was a lot of hard graft touring. And David Bowie recognised that as important as sound, he needed vision. Top of heart. And that's where the spandex, the flashy suits, the makeup came from. There's a hilarious interview with Bowie on, I think it's Parkinson, when he was talking about bandmates from all, we're from all, uh, wearing mascara and stuff. Um, so these guys all came from Hull, you know, we're going to play a rock and roll band, they like the songs and all that. And I said, yeah, yeah it's great. So, Do you want to see what we're going to wear? Oh, yeah, yeah right. <laughs> Not way. <laughs> not bloody it, right? I'm not putting that on. I said, no, believe me, it'll, it'll, you look great. It'll, it'll really suit you. Yeah, right. And so I don't know how I did it, but I managed to talk them into doing it. And a couple of nights later, we'd done a couple of shows, and all these girls were all over them. And, they, and suddenly the dressing room procedure was really different. It's right. Who's got the blush? <laughs> it, hey, Trevor, have you finished with that mascara? <laughs> But it was Mike Ronson who auditioned Mike Garson to be in the band. Um, <clears throat> Mike Garson would go on to be David Bowie's longest serving bandmate. And 
If you're not familiar with his work, listen to Lady Grinning Soul off Aladdin Sane. Now, Aladdin Sane was kind of Ziggy in America. Um, it was released while they were touring America. Um, and again, that features Mike Ronson sound, who's very active in the production, in the strings. That Bowie sound of that period was very key on Mike Ronson. Well, I keep getting distracted by loud noises. Um, so yeah, Bowie knew that as well as the sound, which Mick Ronson helped him provide, he also needed the visual. And that's where the David Bowie gnawing on his guitar image became very big. Um, and this got him publicity as well as the putting his arm around Mick Ronson on top of the pot, it's very famous, I'm sure you know it. Um, and he was kind of off to the races. But even at this period, Barry knew visually as, much, as, as important as sonically. But it was also through Mike Garson that things started to go a bit wrong between Mick and David Barry. They were on a flight in America, them being Mick and Mike, Mick Ronson, Mike Garson, and the subject of money got brought up. And Mick asked how much Mike was getting, and Mike was very shy and nervous to say that he was making $800 a month, a week, a month. And Mike felt bad because he knew he would be on the lease because he was the new boy. But it turned out Mick was on 40 pounds. So no matter what Mick did, if he was on top of the pops, if he did interviews, if he did four live performance, one live performance, he got that set amount. Um, tensions got rose because of that. And now it, it's not like it ended at that point, it didn't. Um, famously, David Bowie at the Hammersmith Odeon killed off Ziggy. So it's almost ironic that Mick got the job very publicly on the John Peel show and he lost it very publicly on stage at the Hammersmith Odeon. But again, history kind of tells it like that was it for Ziggy, but it wasn't. Um, Mick and Bowie worked on the Pinups album about a month later. Within, I think it's two weeks of the Hammersmith Odeon Bowie killing off Ziggy, Mick was on the studio working on his debut album. Um, John DeFries, who was Bowie's manager, managed Mick. And Bowie did the Pinups album, but then took a little bit of a break. And then the Diamond Dogs period came, which Mick didn't feature on. But Mick wasn't really ready to be a frontman. Um, John DeFries was kind of just not letting the money stop. Bowie was having a bit of a break. Let's get Mick out there. Um, it was harsh on Mick as well. I mean, David Bowie had Mick to fall back on. People came to see Mick, arguably as much as they came to see Bowie. But Mick, kind of after Bowie, had lots of really cool collaborations. But he was kind of better in the background. Obviously he was amazing at guitar, but producing and arranging and his string arrangements were so impressive on so many different collaborations, which I'll get into in the next location. But Pinups would kind of be the swan song for the spiders from Mars. I'll also just mention Trevor Boulder and Woody Mick Wood Woodmancy were the other members of the Spiders from Mars. They all as a band played a lot of the Diamond Dogs tunes, but they none of them appeared on the album. Mike Garson, who stayed in the band, who was in the Spiders from Mars, 
played on Diamond Dogs. Just as the rain comes down in all. He's always said that he had the worst memorial in rock. Um, he used to just have like a, it is thrown in a, a slab of uh, concrete in a park. But they've changed it now. It's that nice little monument now. Um, I'm not sure if the old monument, which I was intrigued to see, is still here. Um, I don't know. But we're going to move. We're going to move location. Um, There's a couple more things to see, uh, and a few more runs and stories to tell. Um, people tend to think Bowie got rid of Mick because people were saying that he was nothing without him. I don't really believe that. Um, I think Bowie, as time proved, he always moved on in chain sound, and it was just time. There never seemed to be much bad blood between the two. But in 1976, when Bowie was in his cocaine period, he did say some um, derogatory things to the spiders on Mars about how boring it was. Um, but apart from that, there was never much bad blood. Um, Bowie would have been Bowie without Mick Ronson. He's a genius. They would have shone through. But for this period, Mick was as important as Bowie. As well as working with David Bowie, Mick Ronson is very infamous for his other collaborations. Probably most famous is Ian Hunter and Mott the Hoople. Um, famous as a collaboration, not really as the work he did. He worked with Elton John before David Bowie um, on the track Man Man Across the Water off the Tumbleweed album. Um, my favourite collaboration with Mick Ronson is Lou Reed. Now, there's some good stories between Mick Ronson and Lou Reed about how Lou Reed would just turn up with the guitar untuned. Um, he just was never ready. Um, Lou Reed saw after David Bowie, after his fame. Um, Lou Reed was in the Velvet Underground, one of the greatest bands ever, but never really sold anything. So he wanted to go more mainstream, and to do that, he enlisted the help of David Bowie. Behind me is the Mick Ronson mural, which is around where he lived, in Hull. Um, so, excuse me if you can't hear me over the, the washing. Um, Mick. Ronson was probably more instrumental on the Transformer album than David Bowie. Um, the string arrangements on Perfect Day, that's Mick Ronson. Um, Satellite of Love, that was Mick as well. Um, a funny story because like Lou Reed's from New York and Mick Ronson's from all and they just couldn't understand a word each other was saying. So they kind of collaborated for music. Um, but that's probably my favorite collaboration that Mick Ronson was involved in. You know, the thing with Ronno is I could very rarely understand a word he said. He had a hull accent. He'd have, he'd have to repeat things five times. Mick Ronson was involved in um, Jack and Diane, that famous number one hit. Um, the choir, that was Mick. He also played with Bob Dylan on tour. Um, he met Bob Dylan in a pub. and. He got the gig through uh, chatting with him in a pub. The irony of that is he never liked Bob Dylan. He never liked his music. Uh, even though David Berry has a song called A Song for Bob Dylan. He would collaborate with David Berry again on the Black Tie White Noise album with the I Feel Free track. Um, his last performance with David Berry was at the Freddie Mercury tribute concert. Um, Mick was very sick, and only Mick knew he was sick at the time. 
but he played heroes with Bowie, which is very iconic. Um, his last job was with Morrissey. He produced the Your Arsenal album, which is one of Morrissey's best solo albums. But he died of liver cancer in 1993. Band the Spiders from Mars. Uh, that was the whole situation that sort of got me uh, the kind of fame that I, I, I had in the early 70s. And the lead guitarist with that band was uh, Mick Ronson. And unfortunately, yeah. And Mick. Uh, tragically, he, he um, succumbed to cancer. Uh, three or four days ago um, and his in his passing it, uh, I, I want to say that of all the early 70s guitar players Mick was probably one of the most influential and profound and and I, I miss him a lot thank you for taking the time to watch my video um, if you find the time please like and subscribe I will get to doing more music videos um, and I can't wait to do a David Bowie one when I'm allowed to get to London, as David Bowie is everything.